All right, so let's get started. Uh, this is going to be what part eight, All right? Yeah, part eight. Uh, and again, this one's going to be fairly quick and straightforward because, as we discussed in the last uh, stream as well, we're pretty much done with all the building blocks. Now we're just putting, you know, all those pieces together and sort of creating the full architecture or rather implementing the full transformer architecture uh, so today's uh, stream is going to be about the decoder you know this particular portion uh, in the transformer you've got this is the transformer we've looked at so far the encoder portion which is the left half and then we have the right half which is this portion if you notice something they pretty much have the same blocks, multi-head attention, feed forward, add a norm. This part looks almost similar, except there's this additional piece called masked multi-head attention. We'll sort of look at what that extra thing is. It's not, you know, it's not, uh, it's not rocket science, but we'll just look at that. And then uh, you also see that the output of the encoder is now being uh, fed into the uh, being fed into the decoder as input into some portion of or some block of the encoder. We'll look at how that's also done. This is all just implementation specific detail. It doesn't really matter where the inputs to a certain blocks come from. Our existing, you know, uh, modules that we've built out will still work. So let's let's take a look at the you know implementation. So. Let's start by looking at the decoder block. Uh, so I made some, I started writing documentation. It's a good thing. So the decoder block is implemented as a single block. Um, so you see over here, let me actually sort of go down and look, only focus on the decoder half of it. Uh, yeah, so this is the decoder half. So let's just focus on this part. If you see this, uh, you'll see that you know, we've got multi-head attention, like you've got two of them, and you've got a feed forward block at a normal, add a normalized layer or a layer normalized, sorry, a layer normalization block. So if you look at it, that's exactly what our decoder block contains. One's the self attention. I'm just calling it self attention. Both of them actually do attention. Uh, the inputs to one multi-head attention block is just, you know, the, the, the inputs are the same. That's why it's self-attention. The second one is not the same. That's why it's cross-attention. And that's exactly what we mean by, uh, you know, cross-attention. That's, that's sort of what is the, that's the term that's used by many. So I'll just stick with that. Uh, but this, the initial self-attention, apart from being, it being self-attention, we also apply a mask. Now, the reason we apply a mask is very important because if we actually take a look at why, it's nicely mentioned again in this, these docs from Amar Jamil, lovely piece. So basically what you want to do is when you do try to relate tokens in a sequence, uh, you're probably trying to relate you know, each token with other tokens. For example, I'm trying to relate the your token with all of these other tokens assuming that we have word level tokens. But in the decoder half, when we talk about masked multi-head attention, what we essentially mean is we want words to only depend on previous words in a sentence or in a sequence, not the future words. They must not be able to see future words. So you basically want to sort of remove this portion so that you know your doesn't get to see cat. Cat doesn't get to see, you know, is a lovely cat. Because it doesn't really make sense. The words that appear in a sentence uh, need only depend on the ones that came before it. Sort of a scenario. Okay. So that's what uh, you use a mask for. There are different kinds of masks that you can apply. Now, all that is, you know, when you get into larger models and more fine tuned models, you'll start seeing a lot more of this stuff. But in the original paper, there is a masked multi-head attention block, and this is what it is. And this is also called 
the, making the model causal. So that's another word. You make the model causal. That's how you do it. Now let's come down to the implementation. It's very simple. We've already seen multi-head attention block and its implementation. We've seen the feed forward block. There's not much here. So this is just that, you know, this is an implementation of new, which means I, it'll allow me to create a new instance of the decoder block. That's great. But this is the important piece. So the decoder block, that means uh, every time this is one decoder block, this whole thing, right? There are going to be N of them. That's the whole point. In the paper, there's about the N is N equals six. So you'll do the six times or six iterations of it. So basically what I want to be able to do is I want to apply self-attention, which is the first one. Uh, let me just minimize this. I want to apply self-attention. Then I want to apply cross-attention. Then I want to apply the feed forward, which is basically this. And then I'm done. That's what you're going to do, right? So you've got self-attention, you've got cross-attention, you got feed forward. That's it. And that's why everything is within a residual layer. As you've already previously seen, residual layer is how we implement, you know, uh, pretty much everything. So this mass multi-head attention is one, the first uh, residual connection, the second residual connection, and then this third residual connection. And then we're able to build this. We've already done all of this, so I won't go into the details of that. But yeah, that basically gives us one instance of the, uh, of the decoder block. Now, the other thing is we now have one decoder block. What we simply do is we go ahead and uh, create you know, another type called the decoder. Now the decoder is basically the full thing. This, this repeated six times. That's the decoder block. And as you can see over here, some documentation that I put together, the decoder takes in the previous decoder outputs and the encoder input. In this case, you see this particular, these two inputs, the key and the values, they come from the encoder. So the goal is what happens over here is, the self tension block, that means this first block, you're only, this is again very similar to the encoder block. You're only paying attention to your own, you know, uh, what do you say, tokens. Sorry, this keeps vanishing. But anyway, the self attention allows the decoder to attend to previous outputs, but the cross attention allows it to attend to the encoder's output. So, for example, you've, we're anyway getting up uh, to the part where we're going to be doing the actual usage of the model, we're going to use the model. We're going to take, let's say, a language in English and a language in some other European language, or depending on if I can find the data set, use one of our native languages in India. But in any case, so you have one language and the other language. So one language, the, the source language is you produce tokens for it. And then the target language, you have your own tokens for it. You are trying to say, what does uh, hello, how are you in English mean in some other language? right? So you want that cross attention. And that's exactly what happens. Yeah. This is the other part. This is where we can actually do the, the correlation between two different sequence of tokens. All right. Uh, and that will basically allow us to incorporate the information that we need into the input sequence. Uh, now, once that's done, we simply go ahead and you know, create our decoder blocks. That means we have those six of them. So we put them in a VEC, basically six decoder blocks. And then we go ahead and construct our decoder. And then we call the forward method on it. It's very simple. That's about it. There's not much happening here. Uh, but just to help you out, I put together a test with the whole, you know, the entire sequence starts with the input embeddings, the positional encodings, everything, just so that, you know, you get uh, a picture of this. So this is a test. If I were to just, uh, let me not do that yet. Let me do that here. I've already got it. So I'm going to go ahead and run the test. This is the same test, the decoder. So let me run that. It's going to take a while because, you know, I'm doing a lot of printing. We've got six rounds of printing and there's a lot of uh, uh, matrix math happening on the GPU as well. Is it happening on the GPU? Oh, no. This is all happening in the CPU. So, not to worry there. 
but effectively, you know, I can also switch to the GPU as well. Uh, effectively, I'm going to use the back end, the metal backend, uh, because I'm working with an Apple uh, Silicon Mac. All right, so you see that's that's kind of what happens. You've got the final decoder output. That's great, but there's a couple of things that I wanted to show you. One is, you know, I'm just sort of going through each step and printing the output so that you know I know exactly what's going on. Uh, so what I wanted to show you over here was, see the mask in the first case is none. Uh, for example, in this case, uh, you need a mask. In this case, there's actually no mask. Let's assume that we work with that. So in one case, there's no mask. In the other case, there's a mask. So let's actually go look at that. If I was to just uh, sort of scroll to the top, I'd probably be able to see my mask. Yeah. See, this is my mask. All right. This mask is being applied, and then you start to see, you know, I'm pretty much, you know, applying negative infinity over here because when we apply the soft mag, it becomes zero. But anyway, we're, we're removing, we're applying a causal mask. The causal mask ensures that uh, a word in a sentence only depends on the previous words, the previous tokens, not the few, the tokens from the future. They don't need to see the tokens from the future. They only need to look at what's coming in in the past, what they had in the past. That's it. All right. So that's uh, something that you can see in terms of output. All right. So that's pretty much what the decoder is. There's a nice little example over here as well. Now, uh, the model, as I said, the model is pretty much done. Uh, there was one portion that called the projection layer that we will talk about. But I guess in the next stream, we'll talk about the projection layer and the full transformer implementation, which is already done. Uh, so it's already done, it's already there. I probably have to put an example together. But the next step after this is actually gonna be, we need to get the data set. We need to sort of look at the data set properly and then prepare the data and then start training our model. Uh, and then the validation portion and then comes the serving portion. So we look at all of these pieces. The one thing that you know uh, we haven't touched so far is because our focus has always been on the candle framework or the transformer architectures has been has been done and dusted. It's been there's several tutorials available for it. What we'd like to see is in candle, how is, uh, what do you call, how does uh, the whole, uh, uh, what do you call, the gradient computation, how, how does that work? How does back propagation, how is back propagation actually implemented? Where you need to compute the gradients and then you need to update the weights and all of that stuff. Where is this stuff stored? How is this updated? You know, those nitty gritty details are something that I'm looking at. I'll probably get to it. In, yeah, and I did raise, you know, I came across some interesting, tiny little issues with Candle and I've posted that on, uh, say, where is that? Uh, their uh, Hugging Face Discord channel. They're very, very responsive. So this is what I meant, said. And, you know, in just a couple of minutes, I guess one of the core contributors said, you know, this is a pretty easy fix. Thanks for finding it, etc." Good. That, that's how fast this thing is moving and really good that, you know, you even with the pace at which they're moving, they're actually, you know, paying attention to people who are actually using it right now. So that's good. Now, I believe that's about it for now. Uh, and yes, in the next stream, we'll talk about the full transformer implementation and I need to go look in the data sets as well, see how we get to actually start playing around with whatever model we built, right? Okay, that's it. Thank you.